Hey guys, to solve the last problem in the homework, um, I thought I could make a short video about what you need to know um, because there's one thing that we didn't talk about is the smallest length scale and how to get a relationship. Um, right, so let's jump in right into it. So make sure that you guys are familiar with these different nomenclature of the length scale, the time scales, and uh, the velocity. So, and I'll just recap, L is the largest length scale, um, U is the fluctuation velocity in that, um, and usually associated with the largest length scale, and the time is basically, you know, the time associated with those length and velocity scales. So, and then the capital U is the mean velocity coming in, can be a shear layer velocity, mean velocity, or can be a free stream. And then this eta is the length scale of the smallest eddies in the flow, and then here zeta, is basically the uh, velocity associated with those smallest length scales. All right, all right. So we are familiar with energy cascade, right? Um, we talked about this in the last class, where um, in turbulent flows, most eddies kind of break up. Um, the smaller, the larger eddies break up into smaller eddies, and then the smaller eddies sort of dissipate, um, you know, due to viscosity, right? So this is where we actually use to derive relationship between the largest length scales and the smallest length scale because what we are actually looking at is an energy cascade, right? So what is energy? Well, you guys know that from simple uh, physics, kinetic energy is proportional to u square, right? So um, it's half me square, half rho v square, right? All, all, that, all of that represents just kinetic energy, right? So, but all, all, what we really want is at the rate at which the kinetic energy is changing. So that means we want to do like, you know, how the kinetic energy is changing with respect to time. So we can divide by t, and then you can actually get a sense of how that energy is changing with respect to time. But you know, at the largest length scales, you can you can write the time as l over u, right? So you know, velocity is distance by time, so your time is just by length by or distance by velocity, right? Simplifying that, you get an expression called u cubed by l. So the rate at which the kinetic energy changes is basically proportional to the cube of the fluctuating velocity divided by the largest length scale, right? Now let's look at the smallest length scale and see what's happening there, right? So the rate at which the dissipation occurs um, at the smallest length scale is proportional to nu, which is the kinematic viscosity, and Sij is the, you know, you guys know that the rate of shear strain, and a shear, or it's called a shear strain tensor, right? And we saw an expression for this in the last class too, right? It's just a function of the velocity gradients. Again, just to iterate, this equation comes from the simple stress and strain relationship, right? Stress, fluid stress is proportional to the velocity gradients and the, to remove the concept of proportionality, you just include the, you know, the kinematic viscosity or the dynamic viscosity, right? So, well, it's usually the dynamic viscosity, but you know, in some cases you have the row hanging out. So um, that kind of makes it kinematic viscosity. All right, so this is proportional to, the dissipation is proportional to the kinematic viscosity times the shear strain tensor, right? And, you know, writing this in dimensional form, you know, you can see that you know, the, the shear stress tensor is basically has u by x. So that means you know, your dimensional form in the smallest length scale is zeta, which is the velocity at smallest length scale, and eta, which is the velocity at the smallest length scale. Oh, sorry, the length at the, uh, of the smallest eddies, right? So, so you have this relationship, right? So here's where the, um, things get interesting. So now, since you're looking at very, very, very small length scales in turbulent flow in the very small eddies, you can, you know, that should be like an approximation sign, not necessarily an equal to sign, but uh, you guys get the idea that this represents Reynolds number, right? So velocity times length divided by kinematic viscosity is Reynolds number. So usually at the this small length scale, it's reasonable to assume the Reynolds number equal to one, okay? Now here's where things get interesting. In all of these, these is a rate of kinetic energy at which this biggest eddies is breaking down to smallest eddies. And then this is the rate at which the smallest eddies is getting dissipated um, due to viscosity, right? But in order to achieve an equilibrium state or some sort of like a, um, a, a good flow of energy, um, and not have any energy accumulation, um, these needs to be proportional to each other. So that means the rate at which the kinetic energy is changing or introducing at, for the small, largest length scale should be the same rate at which the smallest length scale are dissipating their energy, right? So that means we just have to equate these two. 
So that's what we do because again, remember the, the energy flows continuously. Um, if it's if it's not proportional, then there may be some energy accumulation, which you know uh, we don't have to you know we do, to be to make things easier. We'll just assume that you know this rate um, is pr proportional, you know, and in, 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 you'll see that in most cases it it actually is. So. Um, all right, so this is the equivalence that we need to make. Um, so let's try to simplify this. We take that same equation, and on the left-hand side, I'm just going to multiply with the length scale square times the kinematic viscosity square, right? Um, so and, and multiply and divide by the same um, you know, these parameters. So now, if we actually look, take a look at it, um, zeta eta times nu, the whole square, is basically the Reynolds number at smallest length scale. So that is equal to one, right? So in the end, you actually get nu cubed by e to the power four, proportional to u cubed by L, right? Now I'm gonna make another, um, you know, simple arithmetic, um, just divide and multiply the right-hand side by L cube. So again, the reason is just to get it in a form that we are familiar with. So rearranging it, you actually see that, um, you know, L power four comes to the left-hand side and the mu cube comes down. So U L by nu, it's you guys know what that is, right? That's basically Reynolds number to the power cube, right? So just make sure that this Reynolds number is associated with the largest length scale. So u is the fluctuating velocity, right? L is the length scale of the largest steady, and you guys know what nu is. So you can see that this Reynolds number, or you can also call it as turbulent Reynolds number because essentially you're using these u, which is fluctuating velocity, right? So rearranging all this, you will actually get an expression for the smallest length scale when compared to the largest length scale, right? Smallest length scale is proportional to the largest length scale times Reynolds number minus three by four. So what this means is that, you know, you can probably can guess what happens to this eta as you increase the Reynolds number, right? As the Reynolds number go up, your smallest length scale goes down, right? So we will look at some examples of this in class, but this is all that you need to solve the last problem in the first homework, right? Have fun.